So let's create a, a perforated uh, swatch here in Illustrator and uh, same, same kind of thought process here with um, doing a tiled mesh. Um, you want to create a, a square. So this will be your tiled shape. And what you want to do here is we'll fill this with um, red right now just so we can see what's going on and, and we'll get rid of the outline color. Now that will eventually be totally transparent. Now the idea is if I want to make a, a microperf material, something that has little tiny holes in, in a synthetic uh, type of material, you're going to want to create a, a circle and right now it's important to to think about how far your spacing is going to be. So let's go and this will just be a simple one. You can go you can do gradients if you like to have more of a perforated um, like shadow effect and you can change the gradient angle to however you want. So let's stick let's go with this. Now I'm going to place this in the center and the way I'm going to do that you can see they're off center here. I'm going to align again by hitting those two and you can see now they're both uh, centered here. Now this we're going to zoom out here. This right here, if we copy and paste this, we paste one here. I'll move one over here. Move another one here. You can start to see this is how your this is the spacing that your perfs are gonna are gonna take on from each other this distance. So it's important that when you have your square shape you want to create this size <coughs> excuse me you want to create this size circle depending on how far apart from each other you want them to be so we're going to delete all of these here now I'm, I'm happy with that so I'm going to take this and we're going to get rid of the fill and it's going to be totally uh, transparent and under your swatches you just select all of this both shapes, drag it over, and you've just created your perf swatch. And now, notice how large this is. And let me just do something really quickly here before we go forward. I'm going to copy and, and, and drag this down over here. And we're going to scale this down to something like that. So now you can see the two shapes One's this size up here, and this one's significantly smaller. And what you can see is this is an 11 by 17 page. And we'll show you right now. I'm just going to create a simple, a simple shape here. And I'm going to fill that with this larger shape here that I've already created. Now you can see how big this is because it's using the shape size proportions here to add that into this form. Now, we'll take this guy down here and we'll make a shape there and we'll create another rectangular shape and it's filling with the current selection. So let's go ahead and select the new one. Now you can see just by scaling these two down, look at the differences in, in sizes from each other as far as the starting point. Now I can take this and by clicking S and then holding the serif and shift tool down, I can scale this down to get it approximately to the same size as, as below here. But if you wanted to start here, you know, it's totally up to you. I just wanted to show you that if you make this big, you're going to start off with a big panel. So if you create a small shape like this, let's fill this with red right now so you can see. If you create a small shape like this, when you go to your first one, the larger one, and you fill it with that, you can kind of see how it's it's really hard to tell. Sometimes you won't even see anything in there. So if we do this one, you can see how you start to see more of your, your image in smaller shape. So I just want to let you know that sometimes you may not be able to see what's actually happening, and that's because of the, the scale that you started off with. So that's how to create a perf, uh, micro perf material.
So let's say we want to take our microperf and create a different type of perforated shape. Uh, it's really simple. All you do is we just change this circular shape here. Instead of it being like a punched hole, we can change that to any other type of shape that we want. So I'm just going to create something kind of like a slit, uh, like a punched um, X cut in here. And I'm going to use my eyedropper tool, and we'll select the same same kind of color here. And we'll just change the gradient direction. So let's delete that. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to Apple C, Apple F, cut and paste in front. Click R, and by holding Shift, I'm going to go 45 and then 90 degree. It snaps to uh, 45 increments. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to select this shape, hold Shift, and, and select both of these shapes together. I want to combine these two forms together. Note it makes a little box here in the center. We can get rid of that by clicking on Expand. So now this is one one shape and you can see the gradation comes nicely nicely from this angle here down to the bottom right. Now we want to position this same way we did before in the center of this square tiled form and we do that by aligning click on this function and this function now we're to perfectly in the center. Now remember let's take off the red outline we just had that active so you could kind of see where that shape was, where we were working, and select this, and we can drag this over in our swatches, and you can see it just appeared right here. Now, we'll zoom out a bit, <clears throat> we'll move this over to the side, and I'll create, let's create a shape like this, and right now our outline is active, so let's activate our fill and we'll click this and there you go there's our fill you can see again it's using the same size that you started with to fill it in here so if you hold if you click s for scale shift and serif you can click and drag to get whatever kind of pattern pat punched out you like now say we want our spacing to be a little bit further away so you can see here's our our outline shape. Let's activate that again in in red, so you can see it. Now take this shape and by scaling this down and maybe even making this bigger, you can see the distance from from the center here. This is going to be further apart. So make your shape a little bigger. And now when you go to, let's get rid of the red, select both at the same time, click, drag over. What, we, what will happen is when we select this and we change it, make sure your fill is active and on top, and we change it here, notice the spacing. It's going to keep the same scale, but watch how it spaces them apart. See how far apart they are now? So it depends on your pattern piece and what you want your pattern piece to look like. But you have a lot of control over the spacing of these shapes. So if you want something a little bigger but further apart, all you need to do is just make, make this outer shape larger. So the center, and again, this center, if we duplicate this, you can see from this center to this center, that's how far the distance is going to be apart from itself. So you have a little bit of control here by scaling, but it really matters how you start your image off and your artwork, the starting point of that artwork. So it's very important to get this the correct shape and sizing you want. So and there's a lot of options here. So that's how to create a micro perf. Um, material that has some slotted uh, punched slits in it in an X shape.